We are now joined by UFC lightweight uh, Scott Holtzman. Scott, thank you for joining us. Hey, glad to be here. Uh, our first question comes from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Scott. John. I'm doing good, Gabriel. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for asking. <laughs> this, this is a big opportunity for you. How do you feel when this guy is coming out and saying he is, quote, extremely disappointed to be fighting you because you're not ranked? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, he said that publicly. He said that everywhere. He's, he's you know, campaigning for a top 10 opponent on, uh, you know, on social media, all that. So, I mean, I think we've seen it time and time again, man. You, you underestimate a guy. You go in there, you look past him. Uh, and you next thing you know you get beat so he's got to face me man to man in there he's uh you know he, he's got to get in there and pay the piper so i'm i'm not worried about that one bit man it's a fight i'm confident myself he's uh he's already been up in the rankings he fell out and now he's trying to climb back in but i hadn't seen him beat any ranked opponents lately either so it's a good matchup they say don't make it personal, don't let the anger or anything cloud your judgment, but is there any extra heat in the training camp because you want to make a statement after he says stuff like that? No, it's business as usual, man. I always train hard. I always do all the right things. I'm, I'm a true professional. Uh, I train for each guy just as hard. It's a big opportunity, but I'm prepared for it. I'm ready. Like I said, he's been up there. He's fallen back down. Uh, I'm on the way up. I'm I'm trending upward, so uh, it's my time. I'll ask you about that because in the past you've said you know yet the whole you know logically you're supposed to try to move up the rankings, but you said you're more of a BMF title kind of guy and a kind of fighter. Can you expand on that idea a little bit for us? Yeah, I've been in a couple fights where guys uh, just want to grapple, and I mean I've done it too. So. Um, I'm looking for exciting fights. So I, I want fans that the, the fights that the fans like, uh, you know, winning a bonus every now and then is nice too. But it uh, turns out here lately, all the exciting fights are up in the top 15. So uh, if that's what I got to do to chase those good fights, if I got to fight those top 15 guys, then, then so be it. And if I end up being ranked, then fine too. But you don't get paid any extra to fight a guy with a number by his name. So why not make it exciting? Who would be your ideal opponent for a lightweight BMF belt? Uh, Benil Dariush on Saturday night. Great answer. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Go next to uh, Bryson Hester. Your line is open. Uh, Bryson, your line is open. How you doing, Scott? Hey, doing good. How are you, Bryson? I'm good. Um, so you're fighting the number 14 guy in uh, Benio Dariush. I know you were talking about how much, you know, rankings don't really matter. But, uh, like, how, how, how does it feel? To, you know, you're 10 fights into your UFC career, like, and things are starting to pay off. You're starting to get, you know, like, a ranked opponents, like, bigger names. Like, just talk to me how you're feeling. How does, how does that feel to get the recognition? Oh, it feels good. It just feels like I'm I'm starting to validate all the hard work that I put in. I've never cut any corners. Uh, I've always trained hard. I've always dedicated my life to it. So it feels good to finally have some validation and also to, you know, to be buzzing through these contracts and make a little more money. So uh, I'm excited and I think I belong up there. So I belong up there with the top 15 guys. I'm, I believe I'm one of the best in the world and the people around me do too. And uh Saturday night, we're out to prove that. I think uh, everybody everybody has to find their way into the ranking somehow. So uh, Saturday night's my chance to prove it and to also uh, kind of introduce myself to the world because he's a he's a fairly well known guy. Right, right. And uh, you've been tr training at Jim. How how long have you been training at a uh, Jim O out of uh, Gastonia now? Uh, I've been with the coach, Jeff Jimmo. I've been with him my entire career. He's from Charlotte. Uh, he finally decided to open a gym. And when I had a baby two years ago, I uh, decided it was better to stay closer to home in Tennessee. So now we've kind of built up a training camp there in Charlotte. We've got uh, Brian Barberina, Impa Kasaganai. He's fighting Tuesday night on the contenders. Uh, 
some other Bellator guys. Joe Selecki's come from the contenders. We got a we got a whole group of uh, real good guys, and my coach Jeff Jimmo there is real good. So uh, I've been traveling there for training camp through the week, and then back home on the weekends to see the baby. Gotcha, gotcha. So how was uh, how was traveling out from Charlotte to uh, Vegas? How did how did how did that go down for fight week? It was easy, man. I've I've made this flight uh, tons of times. I fought here two, three times. So real easy. Two flights. They spaced them out. Uh, didn't have anybody sitting next to me coughing on me. So uh, I passed my COVID test. So that's all that really matters. All right. And uh, last question for you. Um, your your last fight was one of the best uh, fights of 2020 so far. And uh, coincidentally, Daryush's uh, last fight was one of the best fights of 2020 so far. So how how important would you say it is to have uh, a dance partner that's going to gonna look to bring it on um, uh, Saturday night? Uh, I don't think that's important. It'd be way easier on me if he just lay down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, what can you, everybody know, you know what you're getting with Benil, you know what you're getting with everybody in the top 15. I think the lightweight division is the toughest division in the entire world. So I think even one through 30, I think the number 30 guy, whoever that might be on any given day could, could be uh, anybody in the top 10, you know, on any given day. So uh, we're all so good, man, uh, that it doesn't matter, but uh, it's nice to have a good opponent and obviously uh, the validation when I get that win. All right. Appreciate you, Scott. Good luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Uh, I had heard when I talked to Benil a couple of weeks ago, he had said that when Sean Shelby and called and told him about this fight, that you had mentioned Benil as a potential opponent. Can you kind of give me an idea like how this came together? Did you mention Benil as an opponent you wanted to face? Well, there, was, there weren't a whole lot of guys available. So, uh, you know, we started talking about who's available and who's ahead of me uh, or right around me. There weren't a whole lot of guys. So um, I just started mentioning names. So Benil is one of about five guys that I mentioned. So, yeah, he got mentioned in there. Regardless of the comments about, you know, not getting a top 10 opponent, but at the end of the day, he still took the fight. Uh, when some guys we know for a fact don't, you know, they're not interested in fighting a guy who's ranked below them or not in the rankings. Uh, is there a certain level of respect that you have that he did ultimately still take this fight, though? Yeah, no doubt. He didn't have to take it. I don't. I think if he'd passed on it, nobody would have cared. He had to sit out for a little while longer. So, uh, you know, and we're all here to make money, too. So, yeah, respect to him for taking the fight. He didn't have to. So I appreciate that. But um, it doesn't mean I owe him anything. We saw it in his last fight. He got the big knockout, you know, highlight reel knockout and, and a great performance. But we all has a, a very, very big background in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and grappling. Uh, again, you mentioned you like the exciting fights. And, and Benil has you know, traditionally been a pretty exciting guy his own right. But. Uh, on that aspect, if he does take it to the ground, if it does become that kind of match, how confident are you matching your ground skills against a guy like Benil? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to put on a pair of spats and grapple with him. I'd be silly, um, <laughs> you know. And I don't want to put on a wrestling singlet either. But there's some intangibles there in MMA, and uh, I like my odds there. I like my takedown defense. Uh, I like my get ups. But uh, he's no slouch on the ground, man. He's a world champion. He's got all these wins. So. Uh, it'd be silly for me to just want to grapple with him, but uh, I'm not scared to go there. I've been there before. I've been taken down. I always get up. Uh, I've never been submitted. I work my way out. So I'm confident there. Um, so, and, and it'll be a little bit of everything. And, you know, from the last fight, he did have a big knockout. But what I saw was he was almost knocked out just before that. And a couple mistakes on the, from the other guy led to that knockout. So, um, you know, I see a lot of a lot of key takeaways that can help me uh, in that knockout. Well, it's a great segue to my last question, which is that you know, if he does want to engage in a bit of a, a firefight with you, do you feel like that plays right into your hand if he does decide to you know start throwing bombs? And, and we saw it in that sequence where the fight ended; they were trading. Obviously, he got a great knockout, and you know, kudos to him. But do you feel like if he invites that kind of fight, that could be uh, that could play right into your hand? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I like to stand up and throw. You've never seen me back down from a fight. I'm in the pocket there. Uh, I throw down, man. I'm a I'm a old Western gunslinger from from Tennessee. So, um, yeah, 
I'd love that. That play right into my hands. And uh, the thing about Benil is he always gets hit. He always gets hit. He gets hit hard. His face is always there to be hit. So he's going to be hit Saturday night. He's going to hit me. I'm going to hit him. That's how I always fight. So uh, we'll see who can stand in there longer. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks, David. All right, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, you're all set. Thanks.